Hola, hola, once again. Uh, in today's episode, or well, how should I say it? In the last episode, we actually spoke a bit about the M104 engines and, uh, you know, I was fabricating the manifold to it. It started to turn out pretty nice, but we ran out of uh, clips. Now we have some more clips, so now we can film the rest of it. Um, I'm a bit sick and I have to move my stuff today to the new apartment, so I don't have too much time. But uh, yeah, let's get going. And because I need my day to be as productive as possible, I went ahead and picked up one of these uh, uh, like chicken uh, triangle sandwiches. We like to call these uh, chemical colmio in Finnish, which directly translates to chemical uh, triangle because these things do not taste like anything. And also a white monster because this is what gets you going. But anyhow, now let's check the manifold. As you can see, it's all starting to come together. Um, I still have a small bit of welding here. I'll do that first and then I'll mark everything else up. I always like to, you know, remove a bit of the parts from the manifold because it's a lot easier to weld. The collector part of the manifold, as you can see, the two pieces of straight pipe, it has been bolted up to a, uh, I don't know, like I-beam rod or I-beam, whatever you want it want to call it and the reason I do threads in these flanges is so that I can just bolt up a few bolts from beneath and then it gets tightened down and it doesn't warp at all but yeah I'll uh, warm myself up and then I'll chugga 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 and then we are good to go and before we go to the welding part I have to clean up a bit it's very very messy at the moment but I actually thought about one way to improve the manifolds uh, clearance issue and uh, I think I came up with a good solution. I'll show you right now. So here we have the current collector type I'm using on the manifold. As you can see, or as you rem might remember, there's a small batch of uh, straight pipe here, or this is just one piece. And then the notched tubes go quite down on this part. But I thought, you know, in theory, we could just lift the notched tubes up a bit, add two 45 degree angles before it comes away from the flange. So it'll uh, the top view, view will be like it, uh, oh no, this is not good to show, but uh, from the top, you know, here's a 90 degree turn, a 45, same thing on this side, this one, be one will be regular, and uh, if we do it like this, we will place the collector a lot more up, we can shave off maybe 4 centimeters from here, which is really good, and in theory, we are able to make an even sharper collector when we do it like this, so yeah. And as I stated on the last video, when you're starting to mass produce manifolds for the M104 engine or any engine that's available on the market, you really have to calculate out, you know, what is cost effective and what not. Uh, the best thing would be to get all the collectors and everything cut out from a machine shop. But then again, uh, I don't have a buddy or anybody I know who could do that. So uh, yeah, that's why we have to do it ourselves. But I think uh, when that manifold is done, uh, I'll directly start making the next one and I'll try to do uh, the collectors the way I showed you so we you know we take them a bit more up to 45 degree turns and voila and the whole idea with uh, making manifolds you know as I stated earlier I have a really really long video explaining a lot of the stuff in Finnish so for my Finnish audience go check it out um, but you know, on a turbo manifold, the length of the pipes is not as crucial as it is on a naturally aspirated engine. There's a lot, a lot, a lot of facts and stuff and mathematics and whatnot going into it. But uh, on a turbo manifold, the point is you have good collectors. They'll make this like uh, suction effect to the next cylinder and then it works. So uh, I'll have to check out how it goes with the new type of collectors if we place them a bit more up because the length of the pipes on the side will be a bit longer than the one on the middle. It is right now too, but now it will uh, grow even more. So we have to see how it performs. <sighs> the first sip of this white monster really makes your day start. I cleaned up a bit of the stuff on the work table. 
as you can see, our working station is really, really, really sketchy. And one thing I find quite fun, this is actually an empty one, we'll have to put it away. You know, I've been building manifolds for a long time. And, uh, you know, of course, the more you build, the better you get. That's a fact. Same thing with going to the gym. The more you go to the gym, the bigger you get and whatnot. And for example, when I built this uh, M50 manifold, it was like a equal length 6 to 1 collector with a precision 6870, I think. And that manifold turned out really nice. It was the nicest looking manifold I've ever done. And I got a lot of comments from people, you know, when I posted up on social media. And they were like, oh man, I wish I had all the... Uh, facilities and uh, tools uh, that you have so that I can build nice manifolds. And I was thinking in my head, you know, all the manifolds I make, they're done with an angle grinder and an old TIG welder I bought four years ago, used. And we don't have any, the, actually the only fancy tool we have here at the garage is this tube notching device. And that one's not fancy at all. It, it's actually really bad. If you're thinking about building your own manifold or fabricating stuff for your car, but if you start fabricating roll cages to cars, for example, that one, then of course there's a lots of lots of tools I would recommend. Well, actually, you need like a tube and a, a bender, and you know the one that goes chicka chicka chicka, and then bends the pipes. Like overall, when you're building a car, the only thing actually you need is a good facility. For example, this one is perfect. It's like uh, 150 square meters, I think it's called. And there's lots of room for my car, for my buddy's car, and for everybody's car. So yeah, you don't need fancy tools. What you do need is knowledge, and nowadays knowledge is very easy to obtain from the internet's wonderful world. So, you know, if you're thinking about something, you have issues with your ECU, uh, you have issues with uh, why your car's not running, open up Google, type in the fault, and after maybe 20 seconds of Googling, you have the result. Uh, to be honest, nowadays, building a car is as easy as it almost can be before we get like AI robots and stuff that are like welding all the rust spots, which is actually something I would, I would really enjoy. But I can show you a good example. Over here, here we have some uh, flanges and stuff that I, you know, I need to build manifolds for. I need to build manifolds of, it's called. And as you can see, here we have uh, these 3D printed uh, collector cutting jigs. These are really simple. My buddy made these and this is a friend of mine's. Uh, there's like, uh, scale here so you know how to notch it you just put the tube in draw it with your uh, marker and then you just cut it out with an angle grinder and you can get the files for these on the internet for free after like 10 seconds of googling you know actually you can order these flanges too um, by internet if you want to nowadays and for example when I, I speak a lot of social media and stuff like that because i post a lot on my snapchat and one of my snapchat followers who's actually nowadays a uh, good friend that made these for me and uh, these help me a lot when building the manifolds because now i don't have to sit and uh, bash some pipes to make them this uh, to make them fit the m104 exhaust port some people uh, like to say you know um, if your exhaust port diameter is like 44 millimeters, it needs to be 44 for the manifold to work. But that is actually not the case according to me. With a bit smaller pipe diameter, you get more energy to the turbo, which makes it spool a lot quicker and you get a lot of benefits. Technically, it does raise your exhaust back pressure a little bit, but then again, the wastegate lets it out. So, you know, homotoimi. But yeah. Now let's quit yapping and start the welding. All right, now I have the collector parts welded up. One thing I did realize is when we mark this pipe up, there is a oh, really, really small gap issue, so we'll have to weld or grind them down and try to fit them perfectly. <coughs> and as you can see by the nice time lapse I just did, 
we now have the manifold all ready and welded up now one thing that was quite a pain in the ass to weld was the pipe of uh, this size collector i realized i've lost my small uh, gas lens for the tig so i had some issues with it but anyhow this is how it looks it's still bolted up to the stress plate or the jig uh, i'll let it cool down you know maybe take a small break and then it's done what was like a positive surprise was the fact that even though i welded the uh, collector part of the uh, turbo side on the manifold with quite high amperage it still didn't warp um, warp so much that we would have some fitment issues i did have to give a little bit of uh, angle grinder to the pipe but then you know that there was like maybe a one millimeter gap even no 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 maybe like half a millimeter or something so this turned out really nice uh, when it's cooled down this will probably be picked up next week i'll still test fit it to the m104 engine and when that's done and i'm happy then i can send the customer a message and to come and pick up your manifold what did we learn from this well we did learn that we need to change the way the collectors uh, are done uh, we also learned that we can do a few things a bit better but you know it's the first prototype before it starts going to mass production well mass and mass but you know when i start produ producing these uh and yeah i'm quite happy you can uh, put one wastegate pipe here and another one here and place the wastegate here if you want to or you can maybe throw it back here you know wherever you like but this is really nice uh, i'll actually show you uh, the collector idea for the coming upcoming manifolds we grab one of these bad boys here and the flange, uh, the T3 flange, it actually not even warp that much. I still have to, you know, CNC machine it so it's all nice and done. Then we grab a bit of the parts here. Uh, I think two is enough. No, we actually don't even need this. Hey, wait. Ha 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 ha, I show you. One, two, three. And then we go to the workstation. Off up. Let's move the monster a little bit. Uh, these are my manifold Legos. I bought these from like a local guy many many years back back in the day when i started building manifolds i actually used these quite a lot uh, the, these are really helpful you know if it's your first time building a manifold um, you might run into some issues you do not know how to calculate the collect correct uh, lengths and uh, you know degrees of the pipes you know and stuff like that so uh, i'll uh, bolt this up and let's see what we can do okay so now we have the part or the one part the center part of the collector technically you know done here this pipe will have two 90 degree, uh, 190 degree turn and 145 and then when you mark it up here you can actually get it really close up to the collector it like uh, yeah, yeah yeah this is like really good because right now when we check out this flange the uh, part where they get together is like uh, i don't know maybe four centimeters below the flange but then again if we do it like this we'll get it oof a meg it's like almost uh, maybe one centimeter so we'll cut out around three centimeters of the total uh, size which is really nice because you know this goes up three centimeter we can make an even better uh, secondary and then everybody's happy and now drr, drums rolling drr, drr. we have the manifold all mocked up to the m104 engine i'm quite happy how it turned out um, i'll try to uh, it's quite tight but it fits even with the original engine mounts um, what I've seen on the forums you know I like to I wouldn't say read a lot but you know uh, check a lot of stuff out on the internet you know knowledge is power <laughs> knowledge uh, but yeah uh, lots of people who are uh, turboing this M104 engine uh, they actually use the stock chassis, the stock engine mounts for some really stupid reason. Uh, these are actually quite clumsy. As you can see, it's this big aluminium part, cast aluminium. There's lots of stuff you could shave off if you wanted to. But, uh, you know, my point with these manifolds is that they will, be, they will be quite universal. And that's the thing that gets the job done. So, yeah. You know, uh, if you're building an M104 engine, which I really hope you are because I... I like these bad boys a lot if you're running stock engine mounts and stock uh, engine like um, what's it called like kumitun like you know the uh, rubber part that dampens up the vibrations from the engine to the chassis uh, i really recommend you if you're drop building a drift car or uh, you know you're not too uh, picky about if it makes a lot of uh, stupid noises inside you know uh, if it's gutted out like the 200 sx i have uh, i really recommend you build the engine mounts by yourself 
uh, you can actually build a really easy mount with a few pieces of tubing and a little plate to the engine you'll get more room uh, it's durable well i haven't heard people uh, break these just by driving regularly but uh, it's a funny word regular uh, uh, uh. but yeah that's what i recommend but now i think this is a warp for this video tomorrow i'll start i have to move my shit stupid bed stupid uh, cartoon boxes but yeah i have to move to my new apartment today if i have some spare time i'll probably just uh, you know come back here and make another manifold but yeah that's it for today if you like this video this is a bit shorter than the last one we had but uh, if you like this feel free to subscribe the channel down below or give a like or give a comment or whatnot and please join us with the journey of building powerful m104 engines on my other uh, social media accounts like my instagram is uh, at Osmos Performance Parts and my Snapchat is I think my editor will put it here but yeah thanks for watching and hope you have a great day